YouTube. How's everybody doing? Hope everybody's doing well. This is Thomas from Mr. Fix All Home and Garden out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Okay, painting part one. All right, this is the video. Apparently, I've got a lot of you guys out there that want to see some more in-depth instructions. Okay, well, this is going to be about that. I'm going to I'm going to try to show you uh, what's going on here with this particular master bedroom. This is one of the contracts, one of the two painting contracts that. I've already got approved and I want to show you exactly the way I think about things, the conversations I've had with a customer prior to them leaving and I just wanted to give you the heads up on what I see, the way I'm going to approach this thing and basically all that good stuff. Okay. Hey guys, how's everybody doing? All right. You know who I am. I'm Tom. Uh, this is what we need to look at first. First off, you got to understand something about painting and especially doing extremely high-end stuff. This is a $750,000 house, okay? I've already worked for this gentleman and his wife once before. I've done a lot of work in this house. I've done a lot of painting work in this house and they brought me back because when a real estate agent came over, and a friend of theirs came over, they saw the work. Now, they didn't say, they, the customers did not tell the real estate agent and this friend of theirs who did the work. They just said, oh, look, what do you think about this room? What do you think about this room? And everybody raved about the painting job, okay? Now, the people who used to own this house before, and when it went on the market, they brought in, and I'm going to tell you the people's name is called Certipro. Now, these are sort of pro painters. Now, nothing wrong with the guys. I'm sure that they have a reputable reputation. They're, uh, they're reputable, but they're a bunch of freaking idiots. And I'll tell you why. It's because they bring in all these Latino crews, and based on some price point, they'll say, okay, we'll do X amount of square feet, and this is what we're going to charge you. And this is, uh, they don't say anything about their quality level, even though they preach quality, blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, I'm going to show you what qu their quality looks like versus what you guys already know what I can do. I, I take it to the very top level of perfection. And I'm not just tooting my own horn here, but I'm going to show you what Certipro and some of these other morons out there paint like. Okay, and I'm going to just show you the defects. Now, I didn't go through uh, all the taping up here and prepping work yet. I just staged it out a little bit for you and now I'm going to show you the mistakes okay stand by all right number one is that they had obviously and I don't know if you're going to be able to see this there was a big repair mark and I know you can't because it's way too bright in here but right here there's a huge repair mark and they didn't fix and feather out the mud okay you can actually feel the ridges when you take your hand this is just like in a body shop you take your hand and put it flat on the wall and then you slowly go across the wall and you can feel every single ripple and every single ridge and there's a huge ridge right here where the guy just didn't complete his sanding work okay now I have made a repair right here I'm just waiting for it to dry and I'll take care of that. Okay, now I told you about the way these guys like to paint. What they do is they freehand everything. And there's a big debate whether or not, you know, some guys out there say, oh, I can, you know, I got 30 years in the business, I can freehand, you know, and we can get out of the job faster. Well, you know, speed is not necessarily quality. Now I'm going to show you some of their stuff. Now you tell me, you see what I'm looking at? Now you can say, oh, that's just a paint chip. You know, okay, what I see is just lousy attention to detail. Now, look at the paint on the trim. This is free-handed. This is where the guy got freaking sloppy, okay? Now, if you look underneath here, you can see, now you tell me, is that some shit right there or what? That's some pure crap where the guy just slapped it on underneath this trim ridge, okay? Now, you can already tell the waviness. You see what the caulk guy did? See how he floated the caulk into the paint? This is, this is exactly where my fingernail is. 
is where the edge of the board is, okay? This is the 90 degree angle where the trim meets the, the sheetrock. They took the caulk and they smeared it and that's how they created this uh, false line, okay? Problem is you cannot make caulk perfectly straight. There's no way on God's earth you can do it. You can just see it. Look at the waviness, okay? And then you can see paint drips. Look at the freaking paint drips in the trim. Look at the shit. See it? I mean, that is just pure slop. Okay? Now, let's get back to some more stuff. Now, I want you to look very carefully. Now, and I know the sun, I gotta make sure I got the right kind of light in here, but there's no 90 degree angle here. This is all free-handed, free-handed paintwork on the trim. Free-handed. Okay? There's your freehand. Look at that shit right there. You tell me that's quality. That's pure garbage. Okay? Now they, they hit all this stuff to where it just doesn't look like it's obvious, but to the trained eye, it's extremely obvious. Now, if you just looked at this, just, you know, like if you're a prospective buyer and you came in here, go, oh, yeah, this paint job looks really good, you know, blah, 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 and you don't have a trained eye, you know, you'll, you'll go along with it. But do you see what I see? Does that look like a straight line to you? That doesn't look like a straight line to me. That looks like just a, a guy who took a cock gun and, just zapped it right along the old baseboard and just kept on rolling. Now, let's see if we can see this. Because I got a, I got the sun kind of fading in and out, so my light is not that great. But anyway, now you tell me. You tell me if there's any quality there. There's no quality there. They're, they're freehanding. Okay. You get the idea where I'm going with this. Now, here's the argument. Can you freehand a room if you know what you're doing and get out of there pretty quick and make the job look halfway decent? Absolutely. I agree. You can do it. If you know how to freehand and you know how to have a steady, if you can hold a brush steady and you know how to use a tapered brush and you can get some pretty, pretty straight lines. I've seen some guys paint some amazingly straight lines with a paintbrush. But here's my argument. Time versus absolute perfect edges, or perfect lines. What would you do? Take an extra two hours to prep with tape, tape it up, do it correctly, and then go back and paint, and get out of there maybe two hours later, but guarantee yourself straight lines, or do you take the short way out? Or the quick way out? Whichever way you want to talk about it, okay? Now, if it were me, and I was looking at this guy's work, it, it's just a fade in. See, he's fading it into the wood over here. See the paint? And you can actually see it up on top a lot more, but it's, it's just not that great. All right. Now, of course, you know me. I'm going to tape up everything, but I want to show you this, and this is what I call the most important part. Okay. Well, outside of them, freaking painting the damn exhaust vent cover, you know, which is just stupidity. I mean, my God, man, I know it's white, but you don't paint those things. Oh, crap. What a, unbelievable. Anyway, okay. That is the trim, okay? That's the trim. This is the absolute stopping point of the trim where the wood stops, okay? Now, here's the sheetrock, the wall, which comes up. And, of course, the trim is nailed on top of the sheetrock. All right? Now, I've taken the tape, and I know for a fact, because I put bifocals on when I put this stuff up, so I can absolutely see the absolute ridge edge of that trim. Now, the caulk guy comes back, and this is some sort of new fad or some cheap, fast way out of this process. But that is caulk, okay? This is what the caulk guys do. So, this paint line, which they paint it all the way up, 
where they, I know for a fact, they painted part of the trim at the bottom here, and the caulk guy will come in and ooze this in there and create this false line. You see it? That's called a false line. I don't know what else you want to call it, but you can see that white line all the way around. And see, look at the look at the variances in it. See it? See how it dips down there? So there's no way on God's earth anybody can paint or caulk a perfectly straight line. Look at the dips. You can see the thickness difference. Okay? All right. That's my point. How in the world can you claim that you have expert painters, expert quality, when you have this kind of crappy work? You can't. There's no way. I'll challenge anybody out there. I don't care who you are, how many years experience you think you got, or say you've got, and you freehand. And I'm not saying you can't freehand good and that you're not damn good at what you do. But I promise you, if we break out four or five different sets of eyes, and we all go in the same room, and we had two identical rooms, you might come out of that room two hours ahead of me, but I'll promise you one thing. I'll have the room that has the most perfectly straight lines, period. And there will be no question about it, because I already know for a fact it would be that way, because I take the time to tape. And there's an art to taping. You can't just come in here and say, oh, I'm going to just tape this, tape this room and, and, and expect it to be absolutely dead on if you don't know how to tape. Now, here's a perfect example of that. What I'm going to share with you is this. My first job, one of the very first jobs I had when I came out of the military was auto body. I worked at an auto body store, okay? And I don't mind telling you, I remember damn near 50-something years ago, 40-something plus years ago, uh, I worked at Butts Pontiac Cadillac uh, Mazda Honda at the 5 Heisinger Plaza in Seaside, California. And that's where I got out of the military at Fort Ord. And that was one of the first jobs I had was at the body shop. Nels Wiegand was my supervisor. And the first job I had was removing all the tape after the cars came out of the paint booth. Now, these were all Cadillacs. I worked in the Cadillac side. So, believe me, back in those days, if you owned a Cadillac, you were rich, all right? So, these guys, I used to grow my fingernails long, and I used to keep a razor blade with me, because that's how I used to make sure that none of the paint was on the chrome. And if any of you guys remember those cars back in those days, they had a lot of freaking chrome on it. And and take a little wire brush, or what we call the little Brillo pads, and I would polish that chrome and make sure there was not one single drop of paint on the chrome. Okay, now, when you start painting, I mean, excuse me, taping, a house, as far as I'm concerned, uh, taping up a car, getting it ready to prep to go into the body uh, paint booth, and removing the tape and prepping the car to remove any overspray is, I think, the most crucial job outside of being just a flat-out great body man and a great painter, okay? The prep guy is the main guy, you know? And if anybody tells you any different that the prep work is not the most important work, I'll kiss your ass. I swear to God, because I know for a fact it would be an absolute lie. Prep work is the most important, especially if you want to get extreme quality. Now, I want you to follow that. You see how it fades, you see white, then you see brown, and that piece of tape is absolutely on the wood. It's on this trim work, okay? Right in that corner, perfectly right on the edge where the wall and the wood meet, okay? So there you go. There's your fluctuation. See it? Okay. All right, I've ranted and raved enough on this one. Point in case on this entire situation with paint work, and the reason why I'm going into more detail with you about this and, and, and sharing with you concepts is this, is that I don't care how good of a painter you are. If you freehand, you cannot be 100% perfect. There's no way, okay? 
I'll challenge you on that because I know for a fact it's impossible. You cannot freehand a perfectly straight line. Nobody's that good, not unless you're Da Vinci. Okay? And I don't think there's a bunch of Da Vinci's left in the world. So, here's the deal. If you want to perfectly, if you want your reputation and you want people to talk about you, you tape up a room and you prep it correctly and you look for every detail that you can possibly think of to make sure that job is perfect. Okay. All right, I'm going to end this segment right here with my little friend in the room, and you guys know what to do. Hit the subscribe button, thumbs up, and I want your comments this time, okay? So if you think, whatever you think, throw me your comments, and I'll leave you with my friend here.